Hello friends, how's the josh? Welcome back to SSB Crack Exams and this is Girish bringing you the MCQs based on the daily current affairs and today is 22nd of February. These MCQs will be helpful for your AFCAT, NDA, CDS, CAPF, Territorial Army and various other defense and paramilitary examinations. Before we begin, I would like to inform you about the courses that we have launched. SSB Crack Exams is India's largest defense examination preparation portal and we have launched various courses for AFCAD, CDS, NDA, INA, Territorial Army and various other defense and paramilitary examinations. You can know more about these by visiting our website ssbcrackexams.com. You can follow us on Instagram and YouTube as well. You can download our app SSB Crack Exams from the Google Play Store and know more about these examinations. There is an introductory offer wherein which by using the code WARRIOR10 you will be getting a flat 10% off on all the courses. Now let's get started. First, we will discuss the question of the day, which was asked on 21st of February. The question was, Chai Chai is an art installation of artwork of which Portuguese artist? Option A, Paula Rigo. Option B, Octavia Zaya. Option C, Nadir Afonso. And Option D, Joana Vasconelosos. The correct answer is, Option D, Joana Vasconelosos. If you see the explanation, recently Portuguese president has visited India. And Union Minister for Culture and Art, Prahlad Singh Patel, has inaugurated this Chai Chai, which is an installation of the artwork of Joanna Vasconelsos at the National Museum. The installation represents the 5 o'clock tradition of the serving tea in Portugal, which is originated in the 17th century. So, 5 o'clock tradition is there in which country? It is there in Portugal. Remember this. Now, let's start with today's questions. First question The Kelo India University Games are going to be held at option A Bhuneshwar, option B Katak, option C Guwahati, option D none of the above. The correct answer is option B Katak. The first ever Kelo India University Games will take off in Katak, Odisha and this will be launched by Prime Minister Narendra Modi. This will be held from February 22nd. The next question, the second question, 5G Hackathon is launched by which department? Option A, Department of Telecommunication. Option B, Department of Information Technology. Option C, Department of Science and Technology. Option D, none of the above. The correct answer is, Option A, Department of Telecommunication. So, to identify and promote the application relevant to that of 5G, the Department of Telecommunication has launched the 5G Hackathon in association with a number of government, academic and industrial stakeholders. It is aimed at shortlisting India, shortlisting India's focus on the cutting edge ideas that can be converted into a workable 5G product and solutions. That is the main aim of this 5G hackathon. The next question. Ask Disha is a chatbot related to which department? Option A, Indian Post. Option B, Indian Railways. Option C, BSNL. Option D, State Bank of India. The correct answer is Option B, Indian Railways. So if you have gone through the IRCTC website, at the bottom of IRCTC website, you will find this Ask Disha. Ask Disha is the chatbot of Indian Railways. This is used to solve, resolve the queries of railway passengers over internet pertaining to various services offered by the Indian Railways. This was introduced to service the people using the artificial intelligence. Initially, it was launched in English, but recently, to enhance the customer service and to further strengthen the service, this chatbot has now powered voice which was enabled in Hindi language also. The next question, the fourth one. Bilai steel plant is located at Option A, Uttar Pradesh Option B, Chhattisgarh Option C, Bihar Option D, Odisha You have to choose the correct answer and the correct answer is Option B, Chhattisgarh So, Union Minister for Steel and Petroleum Sri Dharmendra Pradhan has laid the foundation stone for the ore beneficiation plant at the iron ore premises of Rajara, which will augment the quality of iron ore supplied to the Bilai steel plant. That is why this was in use. So remember the location of the Bilai steel plant, which is in Chhattisgarh. Okay, so Rajara will supply the ore to Bilai steel plant. The next question Which grievance redressal portal of Indian Railways has been awarded silver category under the category 2 National e Governance Awards Excellence in the providing of citizen centric delivery? Option A, Rail Madad, Option B, Post Madad, Option D, Tele Madad, Option D, none of the above. The correct answer is Option A, Rail Madad. So this is the Rail Madad website wherein which a customer who has grievances can raise an issue directly with the Indian Railways. 
So that is why it was given the silver award under category 2 of National E-Governance Awards. The next question, the sixth one. International Mother Language Day is observed annually on Option A, February 21, Option B, February 22, Option C, February 20, and Option D, February 23. We have to choose the correct answer. And the correct answer is Option A, February 21. So, International Mother Language Day is observed annually on February 21 since 2000 as the worldwide observance of UNESCO. So, this day aims to create an awareness on the linguistic cultural diversity and to promote multilingualism in India, in India and across the globe. In India, this is celebrated as Matrabhasha Divas. So, the same International Mother Language Day is celebrated as Matrabhasha Divas on the same day 21st of February. And the international theme for this year is Language Without Borders. And the Indian theme is, the theme in India is celebrating our multilingual heritage. The next question, the seventh one. Thaimangur Fish Breeding Center is located in Option A, Telangana, Option B, Karnataka, Option C, Maharashtra and Option D, Kerala. We have to choose the correct answer and the correct answer is Option C, Maharashtra. So recently, Maharashtra government ordered to destroy the Thaimangur Fish Breeding Centers. This is due to the fact that the fish is cultivated in this Thaimangur Fish Breeding Center in a very unhygienic manner. This Thaimangur fish is a freshwater fish and is also known as walking fish. The next question, the eighth one, which of the three items are not covered under GST as of February 2020? Option A, fuel, coconut alcohol. Option B, fuel, betting alcohol. Option C, fuel, construction alcohol. Option D, fuel, rice and salt. The correct answer is option C, fuel, construction and alcohol. So these are the three items that are not included under the GST net as of February 2020. The taxes applicable are the central and the state taxes separately. The next question, the ninth one. Under the GST regime, EVA bill is mandatory of the value of interstate movements which is more than Option A 60,000 Option B 50,000 Option C 40,000 and Option D 35,000 We have to choose the correct answer and the correct answer is Option B 50,000 This EV bill is the document required to be carried by the person in charge of the conveyance carrying any consignment of goods whose value is greater than 50,000 So this will reduce the waiting time for the consignments at the check post the next question, the 10th one, who was named as the first winner of ESPN India Courage Award? Option A, Datichan, Option B, PV Sindhu, Option C, Smriti Mandana, and Option D, none of the above. The correct answer is Option A, Datichan. So recently, ESPN India Awards are announced and PV Sindhu Saurabh and Saurabh Chaudhary are awarded as the Sportsperson of the Year 2019 in both fame, in female and male categories. So PV Sindhu received this award for the third time and along with this Dati Chen was named as the first winner of ESPN Courage Award. So Dati Chen is the correct answer. The next one, the 11th question. UPI Chalega campaign is launched by Option A RBI, Option B Finance Ministry, Option C NBCI and Option D National Currency Board. The correct answer is Option C NPCI. So recently, the UPA Chalega campaign is launched by NPCA, the National Payment Corporation of India and this aims to guide the users towards the right usage of the UPM and help them to create a habitual change. So because without changing the habitual habits of all the people, then people cannot use these UPA and other technological things that are available. So the change in habits is very much required. The next one, the 12th question. Ideal Legislative Assembly Speaker or Ideal Legislative Council Chairman Award 2019 is presented to Option A. P. Ramakrishnan Option B. Kodala Sivaprasad Option C. P. Dhanpal and Option D. Ramesh Kumar The correct answer is Option A. P. Ramakrishnan So recently, Venkaya Naidu who is the current Vice President of India has presented the Ideal Legislative Assembly Speaker Ideal Legislative Council Chairman Award to P. Ramakrishnan who is the Speaker of Kerala. The next question, the 13th one. Which Indian state or union territory has announced 50% subsidy for ulemas who are the Muslim scholars to purchase two-wheeler vehicles? Option A, Kerala. Option B, Karnataka. Option C, Tamil Nadu. And Option D, Telangana. The correct answer is 
option C, Tamil Nadu. So recently, Tamil Nadu Chief Minister Palani Swami has announced 50% subsidy for ulemas who are the Muslim scholars and who have specialist knowledge of Islamic sacred law to purchase a new two-wheeler and increase their pension to 3,000. The next question, the 14th one, who is the chairman of National Disaster Management Authority? A. Defence Minister Rajnath Singh B. Prime Minister Narendra Modi C. President Ramnath Kovind and D. Home Minister Amit Shah The correct answer is Option B. Narendra Modi So recently, Government of India has approved the appointment of Rajendra Singh, who is a former director at the Indian, Indian Coast Guard Syed Atta Hussain, former Lieutenant General of Army and Krishna Vatsa, Policy and Recovery Advisor, Climate Change and Disaster Risk Reduction, UN Development Programme as the members of the National Disaster Management Authority which was established in 2005 with the Prime Minister as the Chairman and currently as Prime Minister Narendra Modi, he is the Chairman of the National Disaster Management Authority. This is the highest policy making body with regarding to the disaster management. Next one, the 15th question and the last question for the day. Which is the first ever high altitude long endurance solar powered unmanned aircraft tested recently successfully? Option A, FASA 22, Option B, FASA 35, Option C, FASA 30 and Option D, FASA 33. The correct answer is Option B, FASA 35. Here is the image of FASA 35. The high altitude long endurance vehicle hail persistent high altitude solar aircraft FASA has FASA 35 has the potential to remain airborne for a year in the first ever long endurance solar powered unmanned aircraft and this was successfully this has successfully completed its maiden test flight it is developed by bay systems in collaboration with the prismatic limited now the question of the day for 22nd february which social networking service company has acquired the chroma labs founded by a facebook veteran in february 2020 option a whatsapp option b twitter option c instagram and option d snapchat Comment your answer in the comment box and I'll give you the right answer in tomorrow's lecture. Till then, keep studying and stay tuned to SSB Crack Exams. Jai Hind!